Oh, the squad. We never get tired of talking about the squad, do we? Welcome back to Andrew Says. I wouldn't lie to you, except for about the squad. I'm just kidding. They lie themselves enough. Now, if you haven't heard of the BDS movement, it means Boycott, Divestment, Sanction of Israel. Meaning, boycott them, sanction them, obviously. Essentially, it's the movement that Israel is occupying Palestine. It shouldn't exist. It's on stolen land. Yada, 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 to quote Seinfeld. It's a group that Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib of the squad are a part of, it seems, and they wanted to visit Israel with this group, this thought in mind. You can see Israel said no, then Tlaib said in a tweet that she wants to go and visit her grandmother. Her grandmother's her world, she loves her, etc, etc. Everything nice that you would want to say about your grandmother and wanting to visit her. That was on August 15th, and now the next day, I think it's Israeli... Israel's foreign minister or something like that, he's in the Israeli government. I approved her request as a gesture of goodwill on a humanitarian basis, but it was just a provocative request, meaning she doesn't want to come without her group. Obviously, Tlaib said after that, silencing me and treating me like a criminal is not what she, my grandmother, wants for me, so I'm not going to visit my grandmother. So obviously you can't care that much about visiting your grandmother if when you were accepted to go, you rolled back and just went on your previous notion that they're being mean to you. Obviously, you never intended on them saying, never anticipated them saying yes in the first place, so you just stuck with your I'm a victim narrative. Obviously, she doesn't care that much, but at the same time, all Israel wanted is for her to not go and say that their country shouldn't exist. Don't come to our country and just, and just trash talk it. You can come and visit your grandma if you'd like, but don't just come and trash us. Now keep in mind that Omar and Tlaib could have gone to Israel a week prior along with 51 members of Congress, but declined to do so. We know Donald Trump would love nothing more than to use this issue to pit Muslims and Jewish Americans against each other. The Muslim community and the Jewish community are being othered and made into the boogeyman by this administration. That of course is my girl, Ilhan Omar, making completely unrelated statements and attempting to play the victim. Now why would a country want you to come and say that they don't have a right to exist? Just think about that for a second. Yes, they're members of the US government and they should have the right to come there because they give them so much money. Does Israel help them? Are they a good ally? Of course, yes, at the same time, but they could have gone but instead they just wanted to focus on themselves, make it all about them, have their own trip, say what they wanted with their own crazy group, and they could have gone, but they wanted the spotlight all to themselves, and they wanted this story. This was obviously a planned thing they were going to do. Not go with the rest of the group, then say that they wanted to go with BDS behind closed doors, and then when Israel says no, you're saying, oh, you're silencing me because I'm a follower of Islam and this is a Jewish state and they just don't want me to go and expose their travesties and their human rights uh, violations and say how bad Israel is. But they can never actually just be honest about these issues. I don't know who they're fooling at this point. When you say I want to go because of my grandmother and then they say okay you can come to visit your grandmother and then you're just like no this is too this is wrong. <laughs> Sounds like Aaron Carbon. It's wrong. I don't know who they're fooling with this. They can never actually just be honest about these issues. They have to play little games. Now, here's a good example of this. This guy shared a tweet about Palestine. Palestinian Authority bans LGBT active activities in the West Bank. Then this other guy, Robbie, also says, surely the squad will denounce this, right? To which Ilhan Omar responds with, Pretending that this act somehow balances or mitigates Israel violating the dignity and rights of Palestine, which of course Palestinians, which of course means absolutely nothing when it's just that generic, or underlines cases for defending Palestinian rights is deplorable. Forgotten here, of course, is that nobody mentioned Israel in the strain of tweets. You had the guy mentioning the story, you had the person quoting the story and asking for the squad to reply, and then she just goes to, Oh, you must be uh you must be trying to distract from the problem. No, they just want you to respond on this. They just want to be able to say anything because it makes Palestine look bad if they address this actual issue, which is exactly what Tlaib said. They don't want them talking about how bad Israel is, and then they go and do the exact same thing. Clearly, they don't want them talking about how bad Palestine is. Also, 
They've retweeted this cartoon from a guy who was in a Holocaust denial cartoon contest in Iran. He came second in that competition, but denies making any cartoons about denying the Holocaust, saying, quote, I saw that Holocaust denial cartoon, <laughs> Holocaust cartoon competition not as a chance to deny the Holocaust. Why, why would anyone join a Holocaust denial cartoon contest to deny the Holocaust, you guys? That's just insane. I did it to promote uh, my recipes. <laughs> but not, to a not as a chance to deny the Holocaust, but to expose the suffering of Palestinians living under Israeli apartheid. I dare anyone to show a single cartoon of mine denying the Holocaust. These allegations are vile, dishonest, and come always from the same source. Supporters of inhumane treatment given by Israel to Palestinians in the occupied territories. So he pretty much just, you know, says, you can't see my cards. Here's my cards, by the way. <laughs> so what was his cartoon? What was his entry into this competition? Well, obviously it was, you know, uh, a picture of a rose field or a pigeon or dove carrying a letter in World War II. Oh no. Oh, just what appears to be a Palestinian dressed in a Jewish concentration camp uniform from Nazi Germany. No problem there, right, you guys? Completely uh, vindicated from that. I won't even get into how this is not comparable. If someone wants to ask me in the comments, go ahead. Maybe I'll reply. But it should be obvious that this is not a, a comparison. I'm struggling to get the words out because it's so absurd. Now, lastly, Bill Maher is taking heat for trash-talking the BDS movement, obviously as a Jewish person, and not just that, as a rational person. He doesn't agree with the fact that this makes any sense, especially when it comes to the fact that if you want to be in the Democrats, you have to denounce Israel, at least in the new Democratic Party, the communist wing of the Democratic Party. Now, I only agree with Bill Maher about 20% of the time, usually on religion and on political correctness, PC culture. I have usually been aligned with him on those topics. Now, if Bill Maher ran the Democrats and they listened to him, because he's always pleading with them to listen to him, they'd have a much better chance to win. Even though I disagree with him, I think if he ran the Democrats, they'd be a better party. They would get rid of all the nonsense, they'd get rid of all the PC culture, all the random attacks of Israel as if Palestine's completely innocent in all of this. I don't have a side in that fight, just so you know. But if he ran the Democrats, they'd have a much better chance. They'd cut through all the nonsense, all the, the racial purity tests, all the intersectionality and all that lovely stuff that people like to use. And even though I disagree with him, I think he is telling them what they need to hear. I'll leave you with this clip of Mar, where I completely agree with what he's saying. And that somehow, somehow, supporting Palestine became mandatory in leftist circles. Even though they are anti-gay, anti-LGBT, as we saw, they don't allow gatherings. They're anti-Jewishness, of course. They're anti-Israel. Their largest city of Gaza is operated by a government who literally wants to kill all Jews. Now, that's not hyperbole, it is in their charter. Not that they're against Israel, of course they are, but they also want all Jews to be eliminated, and they were voted in. They didn't just cede power, they didn't take it over. They were voted in with this openly being stated. And somehow, this always gets overlooked. Take a look. It's a bullshit purity test. BDS is a bullshit purity test by people who want to appear woke, but actually slept through history class. It's that's true. It's, it's predicated on this notion, I think it's, it's very shallow thinking, that the Jews are in Israel mostly white and the Palestinians are browner, so they must be innocent and correct and the Jews must be wrong. As, as if the occupation came right out of the blue.